The pretest is finally here, and it's definitely the most interesting one in years. Mostly because it's going to be the only one that the teams will have prior to the first race in Bahrain on the 5th of March. With that being said, the teams don't have much space to experiment with different things on their cars if they want to have a solid start. So it would be crucial to implement the best possible solutions on the 2023 challenges. But what does Red Bull expect from their car? Is it possible that the team will suffer from the budget cap penalties and be on the back foot from the beginning of the season? If we've learned anything in 2022, it's that Red Bull got everything right. They dominated so much that the FIA had to intervene and fix some of the regulations so that the 2023 season will see a more level playing field. Even with the increased floor and diffuser throat, it seems like the porpoising won't go away on its own unless the teams find a solution in their own garage. This is something Red Bull did not have to deal with in 2022 because, to be honest, all of the other teams entered the season with the issue of porpoising and had to give up some of their performance as a compensation in order for their car to not bounce at high speeds. However, with Ferrari and Mercedes having significantly more time to spend in aerodynamic facilities and thus having a better chance of building an aerodynamic engineering miracle that can compete with Red Bull, it's definitely bad news for the Austrian team. Nonetheless, the fact that Red Bull didn't struggle a single bit in the 2022 season with these regulations is enough of a deal breaker for the rest of the grid when it comes to hoping that the reign of Verstappen will come to an end sooner rather than later. And it's obvious that Red Bull has something in store because they were the only team that didn't give away a huge amount of its details to the public, for unknown reasons. The RB19 is going to be one of the most anticipated cars during the winter test, and the team of Verstappen and Perez had only shown the livery to the real world during the car reveal. Obviously, the car didn't have a huge improvement when it came to the outside look, because why would you fix something that works perfectly for you? However, this is exactly what Red Bull wants you to believe, and it seems like most of the changes are coming in areas that aren't visible to the naked eye, which would be the floor of the car. Initial reports say that the aerodynamic aspect of the car, although proven successful in 2022, will see a huge change for the upcoming season, up to 80%. The three-day test that will be held in Bahrain will see Verstappen and De Vries running the action for the first day with Verstappen taking the entire Thursday and De Vries taking the track in the afternoon. Sergio Perez, on the other hand, will drive the RB19 on Friday morning and all of Saturday, which will only be seen for the first time in real life during these test days at the Bahrain International Circuit. Why is this so important for Red Bull? Obviously, one of the first things that's going to be inspected is the behaviour of the car, because from what we've learned in 2022, Perez and Verstappen are definitely into different types of cars. For example, Verstappen wants a car that has more front end compared to Perez, who loves a car that's a bit more unstable on the rear part. Now, Perez has openly expressed his desire to compete for the championship, and while we find that difficult to understand or accept, it is certainly a legitimate possibility. Red Bull must pay closer attention to Perez's performance now, now that he has legitimately demonstrated the courage to challenge teammate Verstappen. It's a mission that will be so much easier said than done, but if someone has the experience and the machinery to do so, it has to be Perez. What Horner had to say about this is going to make all of the Perez fans a bit angry. Because it comes from a guy who's supposed to support both drivers equally and not publicly show support to the other driver. The form that Max has been in means that he's the man to beat. He's the reigning world champion and Checo has to strive for that. Otherwise, why is he competing? But I think the reality is that in all probability, Max over the season is likely to be the main candidate for the world championship. But Checo has the capability to be right there. We need both drivers performing at the best of their ability for the Constructors' Championship. Furthermore, Horner said that he understands how Perez feels because he has to go against the best driver in the world, who is his teammate, and that isn't easy to beat. That has been shown throughout the two seasons that these two have been teammates, but what was also very interesting is that Perez was actually taking it up to Verstappen in the first half of 2022, until the team decided to build the car more towards Max and less towards Perez. Another thing that the team will want to focus on, other than the performance of the drivers and the preferences of the car, is the weight changes. Even though Red Bull was definitely the most dominant car in 2022, one issue with which they have struggled a lot is the weight of the RB18. According to reports from Silverstone, Red Bull has no issues with their new car, as they are coming off the season in which they battled the grid with an overweight car and still managed to be more successful than everyone else. The testing in Bahrain should reveal if Red Bull has any issues of any kind regarding the weight of the car, but as things stand, it seems like the Austrian team has tied all the knots and knows what they're going after. One thing that remains to be talked about and solved is the budget cap breach, because this is something Mercedes and Ferrari hope to benefit from a lot. 
Red Bull will have 15% less time to spend in the aerodynamic facilities compared to Ferrari and 20% compared to Mercedes. While many think that this is something that won't influence the performance of the Red Bull to that extent, that is definitely not the case. We cannot take the dominance of the Austrian team in 2022 for granted, because there are some changes in the technical regulations that will influence Red Bull's performance to a certain extent. Sure, they are still the team that understood the previous technical regulations better than anyone else, and with the FIA stating that the new regulations do not guarantee that the purposing will be completely eradicated, one would logically expect Red Bull to dominate the sport once again. And this will be demonstrated in Bahrain during the first pre-test. But, according to Wolf, the penalty of Red Bull is definitely something that needs to be paid closer attention to by his team and his rivals. And when talking about this matter, he added, I think they've done a very good job last year getting a car out there that is half a second quicker than everyone else. The lack of wind tunnel time is certainly not great for them, an advantage for us this season. But if you have an efficient machine, you can compensate for that, or large parts of it. Long term, good for us. But we've been in the situation without the penalty in the years before. We have won and had less wind tunnel time than anyone else in the last two seasons. It will bite them a bit, but if they are efficient as an organization, which they have already demonstrated, it's not going to be big. It's going to be a very interesting period for Red Bull, especially now that they have so many issues to deal with regarding the reduced wind tunnel time. The fact that the rest of the grid, especially Ferrari and Mercedes, have understood the solutions to the 2022 issues is going to be enough of a challenge for Red Bull, let alone the fact that the Austrian team is penalised for the 2021 budget cap breach. If there's one thing that we've learned from 2022, is that Verstappen has a very short temper, even when things are indirectly going his way. Remember Barcelona and how angry he was when he wasn't able to pass Russell? Even though Leclerc was retired from the race, and the fact that Verstappen would have finished on the podium was more than good news for the Dutchman. With that being said, Perez has yet to prove that the 2023 challenger is a good fit for him, and that he can win a championship now that he's well into his 30s. The pre-testing will reveal a huge amount of answers, with lots of them being hidden by Red Bull and their car reveal, and we're down for it. We will have to see if Red Bull once again will be the team dominating in 2023, especially because Mercedes found the issues they had towards the end of the 2022 season. And if they continue improving their car like they did last year, we could see Mercedes fighting for wins again and maybe even a championship. And then obviously, we have Ferrari with their new team principal. They could be coming back a lot stronger for the 2023 season. And they've mentioned that they fixed their reliability issues from 2022. The 2023 season could be a very exciting season and we can maybe see three teams fighting for a championship. But let's wait and see what happens during the winter testing starting this week. So, what do you think about Red Bull and the testing in Bahrain? Do you think that the Austrian team will keep both championships safe yet again? Let us know in the comments below.